everybody! I hope you're doing well. Um, I'm really excited to get into this tutorial because I love painting hair and I've got a few requests over on Twitch that um, that I should do a hair tutorial because uh, I, I, the hair, the hair is so luscious and, and fluffy and I have to paint it. Uh, so I, yeah, I'm going to do that today. Um, and if you aren't following me here or over on Twitch, I'd really, really appreciate it. It makes my day every time I see a new follower. So yeah. Um, so let's get into it. So firstly, um, I want to talk about brushes when it comes to painting hair. Um, my favorite go-to brush is the uh, gouache brush. On, it's uh, standard in Clip Studio Paint. So basically, this brush kind of acts a lot like real paint. Like it can blend it can blend the way that real paint can like for example if i had like a bright red and i took a bright blue and i could i can mix them oh i didn't mean to use that whoopsies wrong tool but you can like color pick and mix and it'll just mix the paints together like you had these on an actual palette so that's why i like this brush so if you don't have clip studio paint um, try to find a brush that allows you to do this kind of mixing technique. Uh, I'm not sure what brush you could use in other programs. It could take some, some research on your part. But I am a Clip Studio user, so I use this uh, the gouache brush, which is located under the thick paint section. Um, I have some of my brushes rearranged, uh, so I mean, mine's still in thick paint, but I have some extra brushes in there too, so mine's gonna look a little bit different than how yours will look. But just yeah, just get a brush that has some mixing, some mixing capabilities. You could do this by hand with like a uh, like a soft round brush, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get what we're going for. I like to start with the mid tone of whatever my color will be because it allows me to add my shadows and highlights in and, I, and they blend a little bit better on a mid-tone than having to... It just works better that way. I mean, you could try it other ways. Definitely experiment with what works best for you. Um, but basically what I will start to do is draw kind of like squiggly lines. You're kind of looking for a hair pattern. It's kind of hard to see. Um, hard to imagine how this will be hair. But we will be doing some examples of different hair types on on like head shapes so you can see how this will transfer. So basically start by drawing your squiggly lines and then you're going to draw like short strokes coming up from those squiggly lines. And I need to do like a medium brush size for this. And I'm not applying a ton of pressure when I do this. I'm just kind of kind of making some light brush strokes basically you're making the shadow areas right now on the hair and i think you can start to tell how this is coming together yeah you'll just keep doing this until you've got all of your hair strand pieces in some sort of like a shadow shadow shapes And I know this looks probably super messy. We're not, we're not going for precision when it comes to hair because hair isn't precise. It is very organic. It is very uh, flowy and natural. So it's not going to have like, I mean, it, like if you're going for realistic hair, it's not going to have like big shapes like that. If you want like a more stylized hair, then for sure that could work. But for, for my technique, it's more loose. So then I go back in, um, just applying more pressure with that same darker color and just kind of outlining my hair strands a bit. And this kind of acts like your, your shadow in between the hair strands. So it doesn't matter if this line is perfect. As you, if I zoom in, you can see that these lines are totally super messy. So don't worry about them being perfect. Just get some dark lines around the edges 
of your um of your hair strands so then i'm gonna go back in and just make like i don't know like a couple darker strands in the middle of your your hair chunks this will help to break up the section i hope this is all making sense i've never i've real i'm realizing i've never really broken down this process before so if you guys have any questions feels please feel free to uh leave them below in the comments and i will do my best to uh to to answer them all and if if needed i can make a follow-up video as well so now that we've got our um our like in between strands i'm going to make my brush bigger and i'm just gonna kind of add some more shadow to the ends i'm not pressing very hard again this is like a very light press just getting some more shadows on those like end roots and now i'm gonna do that process again and this is gonna seem a little repetitive but it just helps get everything blended in so that way um whenever you're uh it just looks more natural actually that's all i'm going that's all i'm trying to say is it helps it look more natural when it's blended in because I try to do as much blending as I can with the brush as opposed to like blender brushes. I will get into blender brushes, but not for right now. So I'm going to take my um, color picker and I'm going to pick up this mid-tone. And then I'm going to go probably like a few steps lighter. And then I'm just going to make these like H shapes across the hair and I'm going to kind of follow the shape of the the strands we've made so far and you kind of want to keep them like across the same level here so or like across the same line this will be your highlight so this is where the the light is hitting the hair so um, I used the gouache blender brush. This is also under thick paint, um, but I moved it into the blender brushes because it's easier for me to find it that way. But you can find it if you haven't moved anything under the thick paint section. So I'm just going to blend the edges out of these highlights. Not the whole thing, just the edges because that'll leave like our bright whites in the middle and it'll help to kind of integrate that highlight into the rest of the hair. So we're just blending these edges out. I'm going to redefine these shapes after um, I've blended in that highlight color. It just kind of makes it pop a little bit more. I'm going to add some more strands. And you can keep going with this and just keep repeating this process of defining shapes. And all, some other things I like to do is like grab the hair color and like make a strand that like goes off the path. You know what I mean? So like it looks a little bit more natural. You can have like darker strands. I wouldn't go too crazy with this, but it does help to like break up your shapes. Let's see what I'm doing here. I'm just grabbing this color and just creating you know, some like little like loopies. And this will act as um, just some like stray hairs that aren't part of the clump. So when you zoom out, you can totally see how this is hair. It looks like hair. It's got like a nice sheen to it. You can see like how the shapes are moving but when you zoom in it looks like a mess and that's totally fine it's totally fine for it to look like a mess all that matters is that it looks good when you zoom out <laughs> because that's what most people are going to see anyways not everything has to be rendered to the nines like it can just it can just exist 
in this nice space of painterly when you look up close and, and nice and pretty when you're far away. Okay, so the next thing that I wanted to tackle is putting the ideas that we just um, discussed into practice. So we're going to be doing like a, a straight hair and then a wavy hair example. And eventually I want to do a tutorial on like thicker curly hair and afro texture hair, but that um, kind of involves a different technique. So I think it deserves its own, like its own video. So um, what I'm going to do first is grab a, a, like a, a tapered pen. So you just want something that, I'm gonna go with black. You just want something that tapers on both sides with pressure. Um, so I'm just going to draw a simple hairstyle and I'm thinking that I'm going to do it um, short on one side, long on the other, just so I can show you how to draw some shorter, like uh, some shorter hair. Not going for perfect because this is just an example um but i think it'll pop just a bit also another thing um to mention is that uh when you're drawing hair you want to make sure that you elevate it off the top of the skull just because hair doesn't sit um flush to the head it sits a little bit higher because hair has volume and its own mass so it's not going to be totally flat. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is select the hair that we just drew. Um, we're going to be putting this darker gray color underneath the line art we just drew for the hair. I say line art, but it's more of a sketch. It doesn't have to be a perfect selection because we're just going to be painting over it, but this will just help us get a base down for um, our hair color. Okay, so now that we've got our hair selected, I'm going to make a new layer under, I already have it, but um, we're gonna make a new layer underneath your sketch line art layer, and then just drop in this gray color. And then I'm going to merge down our sketch on top of it. So that way, whenever we're painting, we can just, we can just go. So I'm going to take that um, I'm going to color pick our, our mid-tone gray that we have for the hair, and I'm just going to go a few steps darker than that. Go back to our gouache brush or our painted brush, and then just start to define some hair sections. And when thinking about hair sections, we've got um, our part here. So they are going to move towards the part. They're also going to like if you've got some elevation, they're going to follow that elevation. But basically, if you're struggling to figure out how to make these shapes, I mean, I kind of just guess, to be honest. Like, it doesn't have to be, like, totally perfect representation of how these hair shapes would be. But uh, you can always look at um, photographs of people's hair and just kind of see how their hair flows. And how these sections would get created. So the next thing I'm going to do is just add those um, dark lines that we did in our example. So I'm going to do that for all of the, the strands we just created.
Alright, so I think I've got a good base down. So what I'm going to do is actually grab a bit of a darker color and then just go ahead and outline these shapes like we did in our example before. And while you're working on it, you might think that um, a, a shape that you've created is not quite right. So you can always break it up into two shapes. Again, it's just very, um, very subjective. And now I'm going to start adding those like break points in the hair that we did. They're just, they're just lines that come up from the, the shadow parts. Um, in smaller hair sections, uh, it might kind of make it money to do that, um, just because like there's not a whole lot of room to work with, but on these bigger sections, um, I definitely think it helps. And again, uh, from our example, I'm going to go ahead and grab this mid-tone color and then go a few steps lighter than it and then just make those H shapes. I like to make these H shapes on every strand just because I think it helps a lot. We can always go back and add like a brighter highlight spot later. But I think it makes the hair look very luscious. Right, now we're going to go in with our gouache blender and just blend out the edges of these H shapes like we did before. All right, so I think you can see how this is starting to look like, like hair. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is go in with a, like a dark color and we're gonna add some more shadows in because it's still looking a bit light to me. Again, it's kind of a bit random where I place these, but it's also kind of where I notice like where a shadow would be. And I'm not too worried about light source at this point. I kind of add my light source in later and I will show you that. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is take a soft brush um, with the dark color we have and just kind of brush it right here on the roots and kind of right here at the bottom of this hair section. This will kind of just start to add some, some shadows that are relevant to the, the way that the head is shaped. And then once we did that, I just did it very lightly. Um, I also got it outside of the shape, so you can just go ahead and erase it if you get outside the shape. Anyways, let's start to tackle this shorter hair side. So because it's not going to have these long interlocking strands that, that are like this, how we have them, um, we're going to focus on just creating texture in this area. So I'm going to take like a, like a bigger brush, um, a, like a bigger size of the same gouache brush and just kind of make these scribbly, scribbly patterns. But we're, we're going with the same process here. We're starting with the mid-tone, adding in our shadows. Um, we're, right now we're just creating texture. And going along with the shape of the head, there would be some shadows here and here. Because the, the head is ball shaped in a way, orb shaped. But again, just adding some texture. And you can even use like a texture brush or something. I'm just I'm just using this one to show you like how versatile this like one tool can be. And I'm even gonna 
get a bigger brush in here. So now we've got some texture and some shape. I'm going to go in with the, that lighter color that we used for the highlights earlier and just kind of make those eight shapes again. But instead of on specific areas, we're just just kind of adding them around and I'm going to add some more texture to the outside just because this hair wouldn't be totally flat. So I think that's looking pretty fluffy. So I'm going to grab this dark color again and just kind of add it around. This is really random. I'm just basically adding texture. Just big fluffy texture. Just adding little Z's all around and you can experiment um, with where you put these but again looking at references and seeing how these shadows are added in would help too. Um, I'm just kind of following the shape of her head here. All right and then I'm just going to finish up this hair strand in the front. And there we go, we got some hair. I think that's looking pretty good. It's not perfect, it's just an example, but it's just giving you the basic ideas of how you could apply these practices in your own hair. Okay, so let's try adding some environmental light. So I like to do that by creating a multiply layer and then grabbing my darker color and then locking it down um, or clip it to the layer below so that when I'm drawing, um, it just stays here. So let's say that the light is coming from this direction. This is where our sun is. It's a beautiful arrow. I swear I'm an artist. Okay. So this side's going to be more in shadow. So I'm going to take a soft brush and just add some dark color to it. This will be more in shadow, and so will this part. And maybe down in here as well. Then I'm actually going to go ahead and turn down this multiply layer to around 50, it's at 57% opacity right now. Because it doesn't need to be super dark unless like it's a intense lighting scene. I'm going to create a new layer, and you can either... I would experiment with what um, light layers you like best. I'm a fan of Add Glow, um, so we're, I'm going to do an Add Glow layer. Just kind of add some areas where this light would be a lot brighter. And again, I'm not going to leave that at full opacity. Probably like as uh, 47 percent. So then, once we've got our lighting down, I know this is going to seem really annoying. But I like to merge these layers together um, all the way down again and then go back in with this darker color and redefine um, your, your hair strands. And don't do it for every single one because some of them are going to be obscured by the light. But some of them are going to have more intense shadows because they're in the light as well. So just kind of experiment with where you're putting them. There we go. We've got hair with lighting. And then on to the next hair, I'm going to do a more curly... Um, curly shape and there we have some uh, curly hair I'm gonna merge my line art down on it and then just do the same thing as before so I'm gonna take my uh, darker color and then start making strands and if you did something like this area where it's kind of messy you can just go in with your base color again and just erase it and then go 
go back with your darker color and just make new lines. They aren't precious. Feel free to erase stuff that doesn't quite work and start over. Alright, so let us begin the process of adding all these lines to the edges of our of our strands. Alright, now that we've got these basically defined, it's still pretty messy, so I'm just going to go in with a blender brush and then just kind of blend these areas where it looks a little, a little, a little much. <laughs> Sometimes you'll get that, it's just part of the process. But it's good for me to make like mistakes too whenever I'm making tutorials like this because then I can show you how to fix things when they get messy or stuff like that. Because everybody makes mistakes. Even the, the best AAA artists in the world, they make mistakes too. So don't worry about it. If you make a mistake, just keep going. Just fix it and move on. Or embrace the mistake. Make it part of the piece. I'm gonna go in with uh, our highlight color and just make those eight shapes. And then I'm not really adding a whole bunch of like texture and uh, highlights and shadows back in here because it's all going to be in shadow and I can add that in the multiply layer. And here I'm kind of doing it on the edge of this hair clump because that's probably where the shadow would be. I think you can see what we're at now. I'm going to make that multiply layer. Right, and I'm gonna say that the, the sun's coming in the same direction just for uh, consistency's sake. I'm gonna take this darker color, and in these areas, oh, I should make sure to clip it so that you're not painting outside of your hair. Um, these areas where the hair is like kind of folded on top of each other are gonna be a little darker, even on even in areas that have the light coming at them. Again, the, uh, the part's going to have more shadow. Maybe like 80%. And then I'm actually going to make another multiply layer just because this had so many shapes that we had to add shadows to. So I'm going to add some darkness here and some darkness up here just to reflect our lighting situation. And then I'm going to add in my glow layer. Uh, I use the, the add glow function and just add my light over here. I'm actually going to erase it right here because I know this would be in shadow. Still. Okay, and I'm going to merge that all together. I think you guys have seen a pattern at this point. And then take this darker color, and then I'm gonna redefine the edges of these hair strands. You can probably stop there, at least for the example. I think you guys get the idea. 
Um, so basically to just take this further, you could just keep redoing those those same principles of adding um, shadows and highlights and you can even continue to render this until you get it like photorealistic but personally I, I'd probably stop here maybe go a little bit further with um, separating those layers maybe cleaning up like some of this um, but like from back here you know, I don't see it <laughs> so I don't think it matters um, unless it's like something that you're going to like unless the hair is like a big focal point of the piece or something i don't think that you really need to uh worry about uh making it totally perfect plus i kind of like seeing those those brush strokes and things like that i think it adds a lot to the the piece so again all your personal preference um so if you wanted to start by doing a grayscale um grayscale hair and then turning it to color. I don't totally recommend doing that just because it can look a little muddy. So what I would do is create a multiply layer over top. You can find that in layer modes and then just kind of lay the color uh, with a clipping mask over top of the color that you're you're looking for. You're gonna have to do some more cleanup work like add some more highlights and stuff in, make it a bit more um Basically, you kind of have to do the process over again, but it does give you a good base to start with. But I would probably just start in color. Um, so that way you didn't have to worry about uh, having to redo all of this. Um, plus, you don't have to worry about it being muddy because um, some colors aren't going to be able to overlay very well, um, like lighter colors. Like, for example, say I wanted like light pink hair. It's kind of, that looks like pretty muddy. It's like mauve almost, you know? It's not really light pink. So if I wanted to do light pink hair, I would start with like a, a mid-tone pink. Let's say, let's say this is our, oh God. Let's say this is our pink hair, right? So I would take that flash brush, make some shapes and like a darker pink color, right? Add my, my shadows at the edges. And then come in with my light pink highlight. Yeah, because once you get the, the technique down, you got it. So I hope this was really helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I had a lot of fun making it. I have a lot of fun painting hair. So um, if you guys want more hair tutorials, please let me know. And thank you guys so much for stopping by. Um, if you're not subscribed, it would mean the world to me if you subscribed or hit the like button or even left a comment and let me know um, if this helped you at all. And if you make any art with this tutorial, feel free to tag me in it. I'd love to see what you created. Um, and yeah, thank you so much again. Bye-bye guys.